Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is about the BLT absolute value. Let K be a field, and our focus here will be the field of rational numbers. We define the absolute value as a function or a map from the field into the set of non-negative real numbers. An absolute value should satisfy the following three conditions. The absolute value of x, which is an element of the field, is zero if and only if x is equal to zero. The absolute value of the product is the product of the absolute values. Then we have the triangle inequality. The absolute value of x plus y is less than or equal to the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of y. There is a stronger inequality, which is that the absolute value of x plus y is less than or equal to the maximum of the absolute value of x and the absolute value of y. Because the maximum of two non-negative numbers is less than or equal to their sum. If there is an absolute value that satisfies this inequality, then it also satisfies the triangle inequality. An absolute value that does not satisfy this inequality, like the conventional absolute value, is said to be Archimedean. For example, if we take the absolute value of 1 plus 2, this is equal to 3, which is strictly greater than the maximum of 1 and 2. The conventional absolute value is Archimedean. But if there is an absolute value that satisfies the stronger version of the triangle inequality, then it is said to be non-Archimedean. As I said, our focus here will be the set of rational numbers, and in this video, P is a prime number. To define the B-adic absolute value, we will first define something called the B-adic valuation of X. And let's start by defining the valuation for an integer X. Then we will extend this definition to the case of non-integer rational numbers. The B-adic valuation of X is infinity if X is equal to zero. Otherwise, the B-adic valuation of X is the highest power of the prime P that divides X. If X is not equal to zero, we search for the maximum k such that b to the power k divides x, but b to the power k plus 1 does not divide x. k is a non-negative integer. The b-adic valuation of x is non-negative and is equal to infinity if and only if x is equal to 0. If x is not equal to 0, the valuation will be some finite, no matter how large, integer. Suppose that x and y are non-zero, then we can write x as the prime p to the power r times c, and we can write the non-zero integer y as the prime p to the power s times a. r and s are non-negative integers. c is not a multiple of the prime p. a also is not a multiple of the prime p. What is the valuation of x? It will be this r here. If x is equal to b to the power r and c, and b does not divide c, then b to the r divides x, but p to the r plus 1 does not divide x. The valuation is equal to r. Similarly, the valuation of y is s. What about the valuation of the product? If we multiply these two guys together, we get ca, that's a positive integer that is not divisible by p. And then we have p raised to the power r plus s. The highest power of p dividing the product is r plus s. The valuation of the product is the sum of the valuation of x and the valuation of y. Let's do this little exercise, which will be relevant when we extend the definition of the valuation to non-integer rational numbers. Suppose that c over d is equal to c tilde over d tilde. Cross multiplying, we have c d tilde is equal to c tilde d. What is the valuation of this product here? Based on this argument, it is the sum of the valuation of C and the valuation of D tilde. The valuation of this product, C tilde D, is the sum of the valuation of C tilde and the valuation of D. Because these two integers are equal, then they have the same valuation. And so this sum is equal to that sum. We can move the valuation of D to the left-hand side and the valuation of D tilde to the right-hand side. To get this result here, that the valuation of C minus the valuation of D is equal to the valuation of C tilde minus the valuation of D tilde. If C over D is a rational number, C is an integer, D is a non-zero integer, we will define the valuation of the rational number C over D to be the valuation of C in the numerator minus the valuation of D in the denominator. We can express a rational number in a number of ways. We can write 3 over 7 as 6 over 14. However, by what we have seen on the previous page, the valuation defined as such is well defined because we have proved that if c over d is equal to c tilde over d tilde, this difference here, which is the valuation of this rational number, is equal to that difference, which is the valuation of that rational number. Now to the main point. We are hunting for an absolute value, something that is non-negative, zero, if and only if rational number x is equal to zero, then we need the absolute value of the product to be the product of the absolute values, and then we need the triangle inequality. The claim is that we can define the absolute value in this way. So the Biadic absolute value of the rational number x is the prime p to the power minus the valuation of x. If x is equal to 0, the valuation is taken to be infinity, and we will take b to the minus infinity to be equal to 0. So that the Biadic absolute value is 0 if and only if x is equal to 0. If x and y are non-zero rational numbers, write down x as p to the r times c over d, where c and d 
are co-prime to the prime number P. Write Y as P to the power S times A over J. Also, A and J are co-prime to B. So C, D, A, and J are not multiples of the prime number P. If X is written as such, then the P-adic absolute value of X is P to the power minus R. If R is equal to zero, then X is equal to C over D. By definition, the P-adic absolute value of X is P to the power minus the valuation of this rational number C over D. That's the valuation of C minus the valuation of D. The prime P does not divide C. The prime P does not divide D. So this is equal to zero. That is equal to zero. We have P to the power zero. That's one. If R is equal to zero, then the P-adic absolute value of X as defined is equal to one. What if R is positive? If R is positive, then X has this integer C P to the R in the numerator, and it has the non-zero integer D in the denominator. What is the P-adic absolute value? So this is P to the power minus the valuation of this rational number. Now, what is the valuation of the number in the numerator? P does not divide C. The numerator is divisible by P to the R, but not P to the R plus one. The valuation is R. We need to compute the valuation of the denominator. Well, D is not divisible by B, so that's zero. Then we compute the difference. This is P to the power minus R. Now, if R is negative, then we can think of the rational number X as C divided by the integer P to the minus R times D. What is the p adic absolute value of x in this case? p to the power minus. Then we need the valuation of this rational number, the valuation of c, that's zero, because c is not divisible by p, minus the valuation of the number that we have in the denominator. And the highest power of p dividing this integer is minus r. In this bracket, we have r, and we end up with b to the minus r. Note that in the first case, we have p to the zero, which is also p to the minus r. Whether r is zero, strictly positive, or strictly negative, the p-adic absolute value of x is equal to p to the minus r. If we write down the non-zero rational number y in this way, then we know that the p-adic absolute value of y is p to the power minus s. We need to make sure that the p-adic absolute value of x, y is equal to the product of the p-adic absolute values. And then we need to check that the p-adic absolute value satisfies the triangle inequality. Let's check the product. x is equal to p to the r, c over d, y is equal to p to the s, a over j, the product x, y is p to the r plus s, c, a divided by d, j. What is the p-adic absolute value of this rational number? c, a is not divisible by p, d, j is not divisible by p. So the p-adic absolute value, as we have seen here, is p to the power minus, between brackets, r plus s. This is b to the power minus r times b to the power minus s, which is the product as desired. If either x or y is equal to zero, then the product of the absolute values is zero. x, y is equal to zero, so the p-adic absolute value of the product is also zero. Now let's turn our focus to the sum. If x is equal to zero, x plus y is equal to y, the p-adic absolute value of x plus y is the p-adic absolute value of y. Since x is equal to zero, then the p-adic absolute value of x is equal to zero, and we can write down the p-adic absolute value of the sum, which is the p-adic absolute value of y, as the maximum of zero, which is the p-adic absolute value of x, and the p-adic absolute value of y. We get the same thing if y is equal to zero. If one of these two rational numbers is equal to zero, what we have is that the p-adic absolute value of the sum is equal to the maximum. Let's now study the sum of x and y when both are non-zero rational numbers. Like what we did on the previous page, x is equal to p to the r, c over d, y is equal to p over s, a over j. The prime number p does not divide c or a or d or j. Without loss of generality, let's assume that R is less than or equal to S. What is the p-adic absolute value of X plus Y? This is the p-adic absolute value of P to the R C over D plus P to the S A over J. Let's take P to the power R as a common factor. This is equal to the p-adic absolute value of P to the R. Then we have from here C over D, and from there we have A over J times B to the power S minus R. Note that S minus R is a non-negative integer because we are assuming that S is greater than or equal to R. Let's combine these two rational numbers. We have P to the power R. In the denominator, we have DJ. And note that DJ is not a multiple of the prime number P. In the numerator, we get JC plus P to the power S minus R times DA. We have this integer in the numerator. It may happen that the numerator is divisible by P. We will write down the numerator as P to the power M times n. m is a non-negative integer. n is co-prime to p. p does not divide n. So this is p to the m 
times n. Now we need to obtain the p adic absolute value of p to the power r plus m. And then we have the rational number n over dj. p does not divide n, p does not divide dj. The p adic absolute value of this rational number is p to the power minus r plus m. p to the minus r times p to the minus m. m is greater than or equal to 0. Thus, p to the power minus m is less than or equal to 1. We can upper bound this product by p to the power minus r. We assumed that r is less than or equal to s. p to the r is less than or equal to p to the s. Taking the reciprocal of both sides, we have p to the minus r greater than or equal to p to the minus s, which means that p to the minus r is the maximum of p to the minus r, p to the minus s. And what is p to the minus r? That's the p adic absolute value of x, and p to the minus s is the p adic absolute value of y. So the p adic absolute value is indeed an absolute value that satisfies the triangle inequality. In fact, it is non-Archimedean because it satisfies this stronger version. The p-adic absolute value of x plus y is less than or equal to the maximum of the p-adic absolute value of x and the p-adic absolute value of y. This is the verification that the p-adic absolute value is indeed an absolute value. If p is equal to 3, what is the 3-adic absolute value of 3? Well, 3 is 3 to the power 1, so it is 1 over 3. The 3-adic three absolute value of 3 to the 100 is 1 over 3 to the 100. Generally, the p-adic absolute value of p to the r is p to the minus r. P to the R is a number that grows exponentially with R. However, the p-adic absolute value will tell us that the size of this number is actually small. It's p to the minus R. If R increases, the p-adic absolute value decreases. What is the 7-adic absolute value of this rational number? The numerator can be written as 7 to the power 4 times 13. This rational number is 7 to the 4 times 13 over 141. These two guys are co-prime to 7. The 7 adic absolute value of this rational number is 7 to the minus 4. Minus 11 over 625. This rational number is 5 to the power minus 4 times minus 11 over 1. The 5 adic absolute value is 5 to the power 4. Once we have an absolute value, then we can measure distances between numbers. And because the b adic absolute value sort of reverses the conventional sense of size, it can be used to define a new notion of sequence convergence, which is different from the usual convergence based on the conventional absolute value. For instance, consider the sequence a n 1 plus p plus p squared all the way to p to the n minus 1. So a n is equal to p to the power n minus 1 over p minus 1, as this is a geometric series. Let's compute the p adic absolute value of a n plus m minus a n. This is the sum 1 plus p plus p to the n minus 1, plus p to the n, all the way to p to the power n plus m minus 1. A n is 1 plus p all the way to p to the n minus 1. A n plus m minus a n is p to the power n plus p to the power n plus 1 to p to the power n plus m minus 1. Take p to the n as a common factor. What do we have here? We have an integer. This is p to the power n. And then we have this integer here, which is not divisible by p. So the p-adic absolute value of this integer is p to the power minus n. What does this mean? For every epsilon greater than zero, there exists big M, which depends on epsilon, such that for every k strictly greater than L, which is greater than or equal to big M, we have the p-adic absolute value of a k minus a l strictly less than epsilon. Why is this true? Because the p-adic absolute value of ak minus al, and given that l is inferior to k, we know from here that this is equal to 1 over p to the power l. l is greater than or equal to big M. So 1 over b to the l is less than or equal to 1 over p to the m. Can we choose this to be less than epsilon? Of course. We can choose p to the power m be greater than 1 over epsilon. For every positive epsilon, we can obtain big M such that the prime p to the power big M is greater than 1 over epsilon. What we have here is the definition of a Cauchy sequence. However, it's a Cauchy sequence with respect to the b-adic absolute value. The elements of the sequence are actually getting closer and closer to one another. Closer if we use the b-adic absolute value to measure distance. We can know the limit of this sequence. The limit is 1 over 1 minus p. 
or minus 1 over P minus 1. Let's measure the distance between An and this candidate limit. An itself is P to the N minus 1 over B minus 1. Then we have plus 1 over P minus 1. This is B minus 1. And upstairs, we have P to the power N. We have this rational number. P to the power N. P does not divide 1. P does not divide B minus 1. The B adic absolute value is 1 over B to the power N. We can make this arbitrarily small by choosing a large enough N. For every epsilon greater than 0, there exists K of epsilon such that for every small n greater than or equal to k of epsilon, the b adic absolute value of a n minus minus 1 over b minus 1 is less than epsilon. a n converges to minus 1 over b minus 1. The b adic absolute value provides a solid basis for new possibilities and mathematical endeavors.